All right, let's get back to the dull making progress thing that we did. Hello. So I've now checked out all of the other places. Owie. I love the the mandatory damage pools that I have to cross yeah, several times. Yeah, that you get times. no benefit from. They also I, yeah, they, they out. They just, they, put, they just put them in the middle of all of the hallways I have to use. So I constantly just take damage from just trying to like go back and forth because they're dicks. Is that another save point? Only two rooms after the previous save point. <laughs> Uh, I just, yeah. Like, I just came from a save point. That's where this episode started. Anyway. Deja vu. Call who are you talking to when you anytime. call? Anytime. That's kind the of a... narrator who is you. <gasps> See, at least in Earthbound, they tell you that you're talking to your mom. That's kind of cool. Aw. You call home to mom. Yeah, that's how you save. It's, it's like a saving for your heart. And it's kind of sweet. You call your family. <laughs> Like that, that kind of stuff is uh, what, what makes the game spaghetti. charming. I jump on the spikes. <laughs> just end it right now. Take him out. We don't need him anymore. Take him. Just have him. Have him go out like Chef did. <laughs> falls to the bottom of a net. A lion abyss. pit. Did he get eaten by lions? Isn't that what happened to he Chef? He fell off of a bridge, fell on like spikes, then got torn in a half by like a bear and a lion. I think. It was a lot. They yeah. were very mad at him for leaving the company. For the show. Yeah. I mean, granted, he was kind of being a dick, so... It's because he's, a, he's were, a Scientologist, yeah, that's why. he was mad they'd made fun of Scientology, supposedly, so he left the show, and then they murdered the fuck out of his character after declaring him a pedophile. <laughs> like, all right. <laughs> no bad blood with that situation. That, uh, honestly, that's kind of funny, though. Like, uh, I don't know. How do I get down? Previously, it just let me fall down. Get fact, down on I it. I fell down do before do when do I didn't do want get to. Get down on it. Now I can't do it on purpose. You just have to keep looking at uh, Alex's head. Wait, what are the stairs that go down? Those stairs don't go... Where do those go? The stairs? They go down to these... It's blocked. No, the, the stairs stairs. The ones right there. That's on the, the one that came from. Is it? It's, yeah, that's how we got here. Oh, see, I'm fucking... <laughs> what do they want from me right now? There's no... Like, I've been everywhere else in the dungeon, right? So, like, this is it. Um, there must be some way to get down. You can't, like, can you hair whip from the top of the ladder? As stupid as that is? That's, mm, I don't know. Lick a hair. <laughs> it's disgusting. I don't... What do they want from me? Uh, are you, is there something that we're not... See? What do they want from me? Some oh there it is. It's just very it's just hard to see at this distance. Oh wow, yeah, I really didn't see that at all. To the left. Please. To the left now, y'all. Throw a cat this time. Five stops now, y'all. <laughs> Shit. <fuck. laughs> Slide to <laughs> Uh, Just go like slide or whatever. I don't care. Uh, Keith and I attended a wedding recently, and I have pictures of myself leading the cha-cha slide. And then I have pictures. There's a picture of me, and I know that in that picture, it's me apologizing to the crowd behind me about how I got my lefts and rights confused because <laughs> I'm making a face where I'm like, "Sorry, everyone." And there's this this lady behind me who's making a very apparent face. Yeah, this face, like, oh, like, like you. Well, well no, no, her face is like, oh, I went the wrong way. Like, oops. Like she's like, oh, like a no fuck face, you know? Like, oh no. And I, and then there's me like kind of shrug shrugging my shoulders, and I'm like, oops. Like, and that's just the picture. Why did it let me fall down before, but now I can't fall down when I want to? I don't, it's, I, I don't see what they want from me. Oh, there's oh, a you have to, yeah, one. No, you have, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. The puzzle here is that it's a really basic level that's easy to solve, but it's hard to see what's happening. Because everything's just slightly outside of the viewable range. That, like, haha, we tricked you. That kind of kills immersion because you think your character could see with his own, his own four eyes. Where is that? <laughs> <laughs> new problems. Yeah, like what? <laughs> well, now you can get down, apparently. That is new to me. For some reason, you're able to get down Just there and not anywhere else. Just come get me, demon boy. Ooh, come get me, demon boy. Yeah. Come find me in this deep, dark cave. 
<laughs> I'm all alone and lost. Oh, no, no. It's Mount Moon all over again. Shortcut. I probably told you that before, but that was like a whole thing for me with Mount Moon. It was so big, and I, I would get... Because the because it's like original Pokemon, it's all super disorienting with all the repeating assets. Yeah. And then you get random encounters constantly. So then after each random encounter, I would kind of forget which way I was going. And then like, and, and then I'd be like, I, I think I'm going this way. And then like 10 minutes would pass and several more random encounters. And then I'd be like back at the entrance of Mount Moon again. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> not going to start the whole thing over. I'm so bad at directions anyway, that like that, my spatial reasoning sucks. And so I was really bad at that one. And then if you didn't have repels, just having Zubat like assault you every five steps just made it like 10 times worse when you got lost because you had to backtrack. And, uh, I ended up having to like draw pictures for myself. Like I had to like get pieces of paper out and like draw. That was hard. Each room with like something that I remembered to like try to figure out which way to go. I just remember it just took me way too long to get through Mount Moon because I just kept starting over on accident. Because like it was one of those things where not only was it a cave, but it was big enough that you could like you couldn't keep the walls on the screen. So like you, it wasn't like a hallway or anything, or a series of hallways. So you couldn't really keep track of where you were going, because you would just be like, you'd finish a, you would finish a random encounter and then just be released back into an ocean of repeating floor texture. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know where I'm going. Help. Remember the room with that one rock? There's also another room with another rock. It looks yep. just like it. Yeah. The one rock. The one have. rock. They only made one rock. Sometimes it's purple. Sometimes it's not purple. And then, yeah, the original, in the original game, well, there wasn't even color. Making things only more difficult. Oh, it's another Mimic. Time to just beat on for like 12 minutes. So, <laughs> what's, go what's going on with your day, Stephanie? <laughs> um, I don't know, nothing in particular. Be really interesting. Four hours. You know, got up it. this morning and got myself to work. Are you doing Sopranos theme? Yeah, <laughs> I was, was going to say, have you seen the Sop Sopranos key? Yeah. Woke up this morning and got myself a gun. I really like that theme song a lot. But yeah, and I woke up this morning and got myself to work, and then I worked, and then I came home, and I'm doing this now. That was my f that was my first exposure to like incredibly overly long HBO intros. Which were mandatory for them apparently, and then like, and then Netflix wanted to be prestige too, so they also had like monstrously long intros to every Netflix show that I just skip every single time because none of them were entertaining. There's like um, one, and I can't remember what it was. Well, you watched the intro to Dora Hid Hidoro. Yeah, but that's not a that's that one is really good, but that's an anime intro. <clears throat> I think that I think that exists. Outside yeah, of their it's thing. it's not Netflix specific, huh? Or is it made for Netflix? It's not, huh? What was the? Oh yeah, I would always watch. Uh... You watched the B Stars intro, and yeah, that's that made was, for Netflix. That was also really good. And the, I like the Agretzko intro, and that's made for Netflix too. Uh, uh, Agretzko is kind of boring, especially after you watch seasons of it. Like the intro is just like the same song, and there's not a lot going on in the intro. Where oh. Doro Hidoro and B Stars have a lot. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but like, I, but I remember now. Like, I, I I would see the House of Cards intro, and it was like, this is kind of entertaining a, for like a, a couple of times. But then he just kind of like wears on you how long it is, because it's just them. It's just a bunch of shots of like Washington D.C. or something. Uh, but then how? Then uh, Orange is the New Black came out, and it was like, oh, I love a really good song. You're right. It was a really evocative intro, and I would watch it over and over again. But then they they started doing like all those Marvel shows, and like. Daredevil and Jessica Jones and so on. No matter no matter what my opinion of each show was, every intro was just like slow pans around like a 3D graphic of some kind or something, and like there was like no subject really. It was just like it was just like it was like it's like it's like watching a screensaver for like 90 seconds, and I'm like, this is miserable. I will skip this every time. And I honestly think it's like a huge shame when like you don't take creative liberties with yeah. your opening. Like Game of Thrones. The Game of Thrones intro is so strong. Because the Game of Thrones intro is this beautiful, like, uh, what do you call it? Like a dire, like a, like it's like a fiction, it's like a fake computer generated, but like incredibly elaborate diorama of the entire world of the, that the, the fantasy world takes place in. And they're all like clockwork little things that like move and so on. 
and it's showing and it's establishing all the important locations for that season. So it actually the intro actually changes what locations it shows each season. You know, it's it's kind of hard because I'm like I'm thinking, I'm th I'm really thinking about like. I mean, you like TV shows more than I do, but like, I can't think of a lot of TV show intros that I really like. I'm just thinking about anime. Like, that's all I can think yeah. about. Like, uh, but I can't think of like any. Cause, Cause like my favorite show is like Breaking Bad, and like that intro is not interesting or fun really no. at all. And like I'm like... watching Mad Men right now, and that intro is like the song's good, but I don't really care much for the, the intro. Um... Was it? Uh... Like the, the Sopranos the in... is good. Pretty but... decent intros are. Uh... Sometimes it's horror. It's so, like there's Walking Dead and there's uh, American Horror Story. Like I showed you some of the American Horror Story. No, ones. I, like, I those do. Are some pretty solid intros. I don't. So I don't like American Horror Story, but yeah. I like. I did like the intro. I will say that yeah. was. Yeah, it's a, a good different one. one every season. I think the intro is more scary than the show is. This, they even redo the song. It's not really a scary show. That's what I wanted. <laughs> it's more of like a campy horror thing. But it's not even campy and like a like it's not campy enough. It's got to figure out its tone for me. It it gets a lot campier after the first season. It gets aggressively campy. <laughs> like by the time you get to the one where it's a haunted hotel full of pretty much exclusively gay characters and Lady Gaga's there for some reason. It's like, "All right, here we go." I just I watched this movie recently. And I got to fucking remember the name of it. Everyone's going to hate me. But it was actually really interesting where it was it was about a guy who was he was planning on being the next like big horror movie icon. And so it, they're, they're filming a documentary about him planning on how his movie's going to go, kind of. So it's like half of it is shot as a documentary and the other half is shot as him exp like him actually doing scary things. And so the documentary crew's following him, and he's like, yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna, like, I have a wire attached to the door, I'm gonna pull the door shut, when she, and she, when she turns around, it's gonna be scary. And, like, he's, like, he's setting up a fake horror movie so he can be the new horror icon. He has a whole backstory made up and everything. And, but at the end, he starts actually killing people, and they're not ready for it, because they're like, <laughs> oh, like, oh, sh oh, like, this is real. This is, like, this is more real than we were really hoping. For. Yeah, which is to say, any real. And they end up actually. <laughs> any up, real was too real. He, he's like he's trying to find his final girl because you know because in every movie there's a final girl and either she lives or she kill she either lives because she kills him, or she's the last one to die. And so he's like going around trying to find like the one girl who's like perfect enough, who's like innocent enough, who's like p pretty enough to be like the <laughs> final girl of his movie. And so it's like he has this whole like this whole it's it's a really good. Oh, I want to say it's called The Rise of Leslie Vernon, the, the next, like, great serial killer, or something like that. It's really interesting. No! It kind of reminded me of, like, Cabin in the Woods, or, like, uh, that one. What's that one that we like that's, like, the has the rednecks uh, in it? Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Yeah, I like movies that have, like, a spin on, on horror tropes like that. Speaking of spinning. <laughs> yeah. See, tying it back. Keith's a true professional. Did they give him credit for the 10th one? Finally! Yay! Yeah, you just get like 100 experience every time, and then it says Chandra got Yeah, plus two. two! I think she got an extra two. Okay, okay. And I don't know why. Because she worked extra hard. Yeah. <laughs> Occupy it, Bank Street? Is that what it said? Yeah. What was that item? Sergeant Salty's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Some kind of fucking bullshit. Mancer fence key? Mancer's heart. And a world of pleasure. What? Oh, no, this is this is um, Mello's mom. What the fuck? Remember, you remember Mello's mom who's a leg? Remember what that? I, I've never read that, and it's distressing. Well, I just want to know how... Vulcan! How am I supposed to... That leg thing. We're never going to get answers Occupy on this. Occupy Bank Street. It's a weapon for... Is it a... Is it an LP? Uh, oh, it's probably for Mello. Because he's a protester. Oh. Open your eyes. Occupy Bank Street. Okay. Oh, I want one that's like the end is near and you can be like Rorschach. Back galley boys. Just double check everyone's weapons because I haven't checked for a while, maybe. I was a little bit disappointed because uh, on Halloween, one of my cousins dressed up as Rorschach. And I made the Pogliacci joke to him, and he didn't get it because he had never read the comic book. Oh. He didn't. He didn't get the Pogliacci joke. It's also in the movie. 
Well, he didn't he didn't get it. So he's just double bad. I said, I am Pagliacci. And he said, what? And I said, I am Pagliacci. <laughs> and he said, what? And I said, why are you wearing that? Take it off. <laughs> 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 he just repeatedly keeps shouting. I am Pagliacci. I am Pagliacci. I am Pagliacci. And I even went. I, I am Pagliacci. I went. Ha ha! Everybody laugh. Good joke. Because <laughs> that's how Rorschach says it. Yeah. He says, "I am Pagliacci." Yeah. Ha ha! Everybody laugh. Good joke. <laughs> yeah, good joke. Everyone laugh. Curtain cloak. Curtain call. That's what he says. I think. Oh, what a good... It, it's definitely like one of those situations in which people are like, oh, I love that character, but they don't understand that that character is it's not supposed worst. to be a good character in the way that a lot of the characters in that are not supposed yeah. to be good characters. Because he's supposed to be... He's supposed to essentially be like a realistic take on Batman to some extent. Or like any kind of person who... Uh, it's like a vigilante justice, but like a reality check on that trope. Yeah. Sometimes you just have people who are just off their rocker who decide to be vigilante uh, heroes and it doesn't always work well for everyone. Oh, that would have been satisfying. If you got all of them? Yeah. yeah. How dare they take that away from you? Yeah, really, like, they should... They really need to look out for people. They're, they're causing, like, psychological damage that will take centuries to repair. I didn't heal my health. What if their game was to just make a game that was just annoying enough to just... Piss you <laughs> off. Like that was the real. That was the oh real. Oh my god, they're moving so fast. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. 22 hits. Take out my sick beats. They're fucked unless unless a dodge or miss. Ouch. Is he alive? Yes. No. Incorrect. Sheep man. I am Pagliacci. Did I tell you about the the Facebook thing? Uh, that, that's that's very vague. Uh, I made a because I was pretentious apparently what else is new uh, I made I, I put that quote uh, with an image of uh, Robin Williams crying as like a uh, oh like the, the whole sad clown idea well, it was just, it was or just, that the people it was just the who... news of his death like I made like a Facebook post that was that caption with an image of Robin with the uh, Robin Williams uh and then fucking Facebook started doing those like automated things where it's like, wow, let's celebrate your best posts. This, this was the big thing you made eight eight years ago. You made this post, and it's just like that. <laughs> That's and, then, sad. and it like throws confetti over it, and all the little party <laughs> people are that look like from Kurtz Kazak are all like dancing and like happy about your post. And it's like it got three likes and stuff like that. And it's like no, <laughs> like if you do to be so fucking careful. Like, Facebook just, like, celebrates horrifying things sometimes. You're like, no, this is not the time, Facebook, stop it. I was watching this this uh, compilation video that was just making me laugh, and it was just about, like, um, old people who are using Facebook, like, in, in a way that doesn't make any sense. And one of them was, like, someone announcing that someone had died, and then some old lady liked it. Yeah. She didn't know what else to do, so she just, thumbs yeah. she, like, liked it. But it's like, that's not really what you should do. Yeah, it's the, uh, because on certain platforms you can, like, react with, like, an emotion specifically, uh, instead of just liking it. But, uh, yeah, but, yeah, like, if on platforms where you can just like, you're like, I don't know what to do. Because <laughs> liking it is wrong, but also, like, uh... It's like, and then someone's grandma will respond with, like, a Minions meme, like, one of those Minions memes that has, like, the, 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 the like... It says like don't. It's like vaccinations like cause autism, and then it has like a minion on it. And I just I'm like I don't know why <laughs> those two ideas are supposed to go together. They're so fast. That was horrible. <laughs> what? It did like it did more damage the second one, but the second one has only half health gone. You notice that? Yes. The first one died. I. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand what's happening anymore. But yeah, the the fact that Facebook does like these automated celebrations are just like, they've, first of all, they've exclusively been sad, either because it was of a sad thing, or because it was just like they're trying to celebrate something that just wasn't very exciting, and so it makes me look really boring and, and awful by comparison. But it's just because I don't have enough of a social media presence. 
they're just hoping you'll be really dependent on that and that's going to be enough positive yeah. encouragement to get you to post all the time it's just like in hopes of you being celebrated for you know getting a lot of likes or something yeah i've never been motivated in that way i don't like uh my social media use is very very limited nah. It was this, uh, like, there was this time, it was like, wow, celebrate eight years of friendship with this person, and it was like, it was just a handful of pictures that I took of them during geologic trips for cut for class, because we, you know, it's like everyone's on this big trip together, and then you, like, you take, whoever, some people are taking photos, and then they tag the people afterwards, and so on. So it's just a, a handful of photos of, of them looking like they're doing stuff out in the field, and none of them have me in them. <laughs> And I haven't talked to that person in like five years. That just makes five, you feel well, awkward. Yeah. It's like I haven't talked to them for like five years and it's just like, wow, remember eight years ago when, when you took pictures of this person and posted them and tagged them online from your trips you went on together? Anyway, you should like share this. <laughs> it's like, no, never. <laughs> this is fucking depressing. I Facebook actually makes me like, I'm, Facebook makes me immensely depressed. I yeah. hate looking at Facebook. I, no, the constant trying to commodify of like the performance of your life and so on is just so it's just a lot. Well, I see people in high much. school and they're like, I'm like, wow, this person's married and has four kids right now. Like, like somebody I, I actually knew pretty well is <laughs> is married and oh, has yeah. several children. Seeing the weird way and that I'm everyone just has like, like a different, they're in like a completely different stage of their life. I always I have a constant struggle of trying to to justify to myself that my the way that I live is valuable even if it isn't typical because I don't think I'm capable of living in like a typical way. Yeah. And so well, Facebook makes me feel the worst about myself because I have to go on there and see people living in the way that I think is what typical success is. Oh yeah, you feel all those like pressures again, like what's so I need to get married and stuff like that. And so and that like that's something I already have issues with anyway. So Facebook's not like a good like me me and my siblings were talking recently about how like my sisters my sisters She's she's quirky like me, and so we're talking about how like when she was when she was little, she said she was gonna get married to someone, and then she's gonna get married. She's gonna have a husband. She's gonna have a baby with him, and then she's gonna leave him out in the woods and never see him again, and just keep the baby she had, <laughs> and leave her husband out in the woods to die. Goodbye. And I remember her, she said that when she was like five, and so I I, I always like bringing that one up because I think <laughs> it's funny. Uh, and she's still got time. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, we were talking about how like she's like. Yeah, I might just adopt some kid later. And it's like, yeah, it's cool. Like, do whatever you want. Like, you know, <laughs> like whatever floats your boat. It's like, maybe I'll just have a bunch of dogs. I'm like, that's cool, too. As long as you're happy, that's fine. Like, I'll visit yep. I'll visit you and your dogs when we're all old together. That's fine. And my brother's like, but I want to I wanna be a, an uncle. And I'm like, well, too bad. <laughs> You'd be an uncle to my dog. It's like a weird stress to like even having a pet that I'm like not totally psyched about. I know you get you get like, <laughs> like, like, you, like their like their survival depends on you every day forever, and it's like wow, try that, but like even longer because humans live longer well, than dogs. It's also <laughs> obviously an emotional toll to everything that you yeah. do. With a, with a Kiki, I can say, hey Kiki, you're you're stupid and kind of fat right now. <laughs> but as long as I say it, like, <laughs> like she's she's wagging her tail at me right now. She doesn't care. If you can't say that to a child, and then, then the child's like, "Can I raise them correctly so they don't hate me later?" And resent What's you. Demon stereo. I'm, I'm here. I'm here for this. Let's do this. Yes. This weird shadow thing. Oh, is it her? Semi Park. Whoa. Oh, no. Ooh. I hate it. You got eye crust. You should wipe your eyes after you wake up. <laughs> Anime does that all the time. I never understand if it's supposed to be like dew or tears it's, or what. Yeah, it's just shiny light. They're very cry -y. Oh, shit. Why isn't this voice acted? Or was it? I don't know. It goes back and forth. I didn't expect this. Normally, whenever this screen happens, this voice acted. Is that her? Is that Sammy Pack? Sammy Park? Shit. They spell it Sammy. Sometimes they spell it S E M I. Sometimes yeah. too, and they go back and forth a lot. I think they explained how to pronounce the S E M I version. Yeah, but why would they? Then why would they write it as Sammy then? If if because like... she goes by Sammy, but her name is is the Semi one. Oh, okay. I think the the I think the message board last month explained how to pronounce the S E M I one, but we forgot because we just go back to Sammy because that's what she goes by anyway. No, no, it's not. 
For a moment, I felt relief. Happy it wasn't Sammy. Why isn't this voice acted? Why is he happy it wasn't Sammy? But then I thought about the spirit of the ghost woman in front of because me. Because she's dead, I guess. I realized there was someone out there missing her, just as much as I was missing Sammy. The person you met for like an hour. Someone out there lost this girl. She was someone's daughter, or sister, or friend. Or nobody liked her and she was a huge bitch to everyone. I felt selfish for the relief, but can you blame me? <laughs> Guys, do you think she's dangerous? She's a ghost, how much harm could she really do? So what do we know now that we found her? Oh, uh, what do we do now that now that we found her? I think we should just talk to her. See why she's here. Once again. Also, Chandra's not gone. Word. Yeah, Chandra is not in this cutscene, but continuing there continues to be no Michael. Also, look at the creepy. Oh yeah. Thing. Do you oh, see the Michael. creepy thing? Uh oh 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 I don't like oh I don't like that. <laughs> Did you spot it? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? I don't like that. What the fuck is this creepy little head sticking out over here? Has he been in like a bunch of scenes and we maybe just never I, noticed? I think we would have noticed. The visuals are pretty simple in this game. I, uh, no, it's, I it's, don't like that. That stood out to me immediately. No, just Why I'm, is it just there? Oh, don't worry about it. He's Pagliacci. Just, just be yourself, man. I'm sure you'll be fine. Just be yourself. Go talk to a girl. Oh. Oh no, wrong advice. <laughs> Just, uh, try and open up to her. Also, re restore your pee-pee. <sighs> There's so many items in my inventory. Where's my best pee-pee? Have I used up all my pee-pee? <laughs> have I been using too much pee-pee around here and didn't buy enough pee-pee from the vending machine? You gotta always have extra pee-pee on you. Yeah, I need more pee-pee. Just, you know, back up pee-pee. Pee-pee, generic water bottle. Ta-da, we have exposed the pee-pee. <laughs> Don't do that in front of the girl. <laughs> That's not she how you make friends. You can't see through her eye crust. <laughs> I got a new life. <laughs> you would hardly recognize me, I'm so glad. Hi, I'm Alex. This is Rory and Claudio. Are you okay? Backbeat. The word was on the street. No, I guess you're dead. Can't be that okay. Why are you here? Shit, I feel stupid. Guys, what the hell am I supposed to say to a freaking ghost? You're doing fine. Just keep talking. Uh, you'll make a connection, I hope. Maybe just sing. You should sing too. Why are you here? In this cave? Why aren't you moving on? Is that a, a thing, guys? Is that a thing, guys? Do ghosts move on? I honestly feel like I'm just quoting movies at this point. Because maybe you're gonna be- Oh my gosh, it'd be the one oh that God. saves me. You're gonna be the one that saves, saves me. Because after all- Was it that song the whole time? And we just didn't recognize it? It's Wonderwall? I don't- Remember what Today she said. It's gonna be the day. Da, 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 I, don't, I don't think that's, what, that's not what she was saying earlier. Now, should have read time. Do you believe that anybody feels, feels the way, way I do about you now? now. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah no, no, none of that was what no. she was saying. Because, uh, yeah. Are you haunting that boombox? Guys, I think she's haunting the boombox. You're my. Oh, he was supposed to be my wonder wall. Oh, her eyes have static on them or something. Look at her tiny little mouth. It's so tiny. She's just crying. She's a little crying. crying boy, boy. He was supposed to be my wonder wall. <laughs> he, he was supposed to be my boyfriend. I made you this mixtape. I made it and gave you everything. You forgot about our date. I ran across the street when I saw you. I was so excited to throw my arms around you. And what did you do when you heard me shout your name? You turned away and you put your arm around her. What did she have that I didn't have? I made you this stupid mixtape. I was never good at talking. I can't say things like you can say things. So I thought, I thought maybe these stupid songs would make you know how I felt. But, 
but you didn't want me for that. You were so cruel. You didn't even stop when the car brakes screeched and my body hit the asphalt. That's pretty bad. Wow. When the red from my head poured onto the ground and everyone screamed, I was invisible to you. I was dead. Are we going to find out he was deaf? <laughs> Damn you, Shane G. Irving. Shane G. Irving. This mixtape was for you. Wherever you are, I know if you could just hear it, I could be at peace. You'd be able to feel the pain you caused me. Probably not. I thought it was a romantic mixtape. Feel how much I loved you. It was in that town that we were in. That like that that town that's supposed to be full of poverty. That I thought, I thought was nice looking. He's still just here. He's just there all the time. I'm the Joker, baby. <laughs> He's a cutie pie. Would you like to remove the cassette? Is it yeah. like Indiana Jones where like the whole cave's gonna crumble now? Oh. Damn. Poor girl. I wonder how long she's been haunting this cassette. I wonder what we should do with it. Boy, I see it. We have two options. We can give it to that Shane G. Irvin guy, or we can return it to her brother who posted on Onisim. I don't really know what's right. I don't really know what's right. On one hand, her brother really wants his sister's cassette back. And on the other, what if we give Shane G. Irving the cassette and she just haunts him for all of eternity? What if that revenge doesn't bring her peace? It sounds like they're answering this question for you. <laughs> Good point. I don't know what's right or wrong in this situation. I'll personally leave that decision up to you, since you were the one to get the story out of her. I'll need to think on it. Okay, well, at least now we don't we know it wasn't Sammy. As interesting as this was, we're no closer today than we were yesterday. Yeah. Every chapter is us making no progress. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's document this in honest and get and go from there. Hey, Alex. I'm happy it wasn't Sammy. I think she's still out there. Thanks, Claudio. I was I was honestly expecting a boss fight. Yeah, and I I, I thought well, so too. Goodbye, dungeon. Like we were gonna like um like Not we were route. gonna exercise her demons by fighting her or something. Yeah. We we're gonna jazzercise her demons. <laughs> I uh. I remember I, like, I used to make tapes for, or not tapes, I used to make CDs for people back in the day. In the, in the 90s. Mixtapes were fun. I was really sad when I got my first laptop that didn't have a disk drive. Yeah. It was like, I was like, it was like jarring. They're phasing out. You're yeah. Like, you're like, what? That's, that's not allowed. I've got two levels. Oh, leveling like crazy. Like, what level is, uh, what's her name gonna be when we get back? Was her name Marlene? Marlene is the is the bird. Oh, you're right. <laughs> you mean what Chandra? Is, sh no, Chandra's here. Oh, oh, you mean v, v, v Vela? 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 Yeah. Vela is my favorite. I don't know. I don't know how she's where she's. She's been abandoned for so long that I'm like, what level is she gonna be when we get back? I know we keep bringing up Pokemon, but I remember I left my Rattata in the in the in the Pokemon daycare for like a million years, expecting it to be good, and I came back and it was like not even that high level, and I was pissed off. So maybe Vela's like that. <laughs> maybe Vela is in the Pokemon daycare and she really hasn't leveled up much at all. She's just been sitting on the couch eating potato chips, eating taters, eating taters, eating bonbons. That's what I was figuring is like we haven't used her in so long that I'm like, after all this progress we've been making are we gonna go back and she's like a super low level as a result or she's been doing training in her free time and she's actually like much cooler level than all 75. of us 75 yeah Fun she's guys. like yeah she's gonna kill us oopsie i forgot to actually i forgot to do the second stage where you then confirm your choices what a weirdly pointlessly time consuming way of doing this i think we're gonna meet somebody though because we're at the bottom Ooh, finally. So that means we're about to go and talk to another, I guess, another puppet person that talks through Marlene. 
That seems to be what happens every five levels. You've got so many levels, Alex. What are you gonna do with your newfound f fortune and shit and whatnot? Fuck. <laughs> Choose wisely. Or not. Got got him. One 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 two one two. One 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 two and two. It's the same result. Well, how are these multipliers different? Then this one's all twos. So I should spend this on one of the ones that isn't twos and the other ones. Yes. But like, I don't know why plus one and plus point five are the same data. Like, this is a weird system of leveling. I, I think, I don't understand, honestly, <laughs> every time you do this, I just watch you do it and I don't understand why it works or what it does. Yeah. I, I just, just, I just, just look at the results just... on the right side and try to pick <laughs> what I think I want. Because certain doors... There's like some kind of base values, but then those multipliers are sent through, and for some reason that leads to different results on the right, and different stats are treated differently for some reason. So I just kind of check what the options are in each one, and then try to pick one of each, basically. Right lately I'm leveling up PP because I kept not leveling it up forever, because for the first like 15 levels I was just picking the biggest numbers I could get, feeling like, oh yeah, I'm gonna take care of, I'm gonna take advantage of any multiplier I can get at all costs, basically. Uh, but then I had a point where I have LP toss and it's really strong, but I'm like, I've, I've gotten this far into the game and I have like no PP. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I think we noticed like other people were joining the party that'll have like 30 and other stuff. Like, yeah, 27, 38, 22, 44. And at the, when, when we were starting getting all these different characters, Alex was still sitting with like six. Like, I think he literally got a skill at one point that he couldn't cast ever because it required more than his maximum. PP. Yeah, why does Alex suck so much? Well, it's because I it's because what I found out is that PP always only levels up by like one or two. It, it's never it never looks like the good option at the time, so I kept not picking it ever. But that meant that the meter was like never getting making any progress. So now I'm making sure I pick it every single time I level up because I need PP. <laughs> I don't want to have to drink a milkshake literally every time I cast LP toss. What a funny like idea to think that like okay it's like I'm gonna fight this kid but hold on I gotta chug this milkshake first yeah. for power. A power milkshake. I feel like if power I was smart, if someone was about to get into a fight with me and they had to be like pulled up and they pull, they just drank a milkshake first, I would almost kind of be scared about that. Yeah, you're like what is what power does he hold? There's something like weird and like he must know something that I don't about milkshakes. <laughs> Hello, Mario flag. That's that illegal. Milkshake has like, you know, drugs in it. <laughs> oh, that's where we started. We went to that giant maker. dungeon just to get slightly up here. Well, we made it. Yay! Cabins again. Dead ends again. What is that? Oh no, it's just the end of a it's house. Just the end. Yep, it's a, it's a Lincoln <laughs> log cabin. Not not log cabin. Literally a Lincoln log cabin. Dude, I wonder how many tiny people. Lincoln logs. A lot of people don't know what Lincoln logs are anymore. That's a them problem. The chest is different they have looking. <laughs> I just feel like that's not like a like very soon that will be something that uh, that no one will know about anymore. I always think about when I see comments on YouTube, and like I'm just like you you have Google. The people will be like commenting like part one of a playthrough is like does this game have local multiplayer and it's like I you're just gonna hope that somebody comes by just to answer your question like just. Type those words into the bar on top of your screen, and you'll have an answer immediately. Yeah, no, I'm. Why is your go-to to answer, ask a question on a video and hope somebody answers it? I I love looking up stuff that's really vague and just being able to find the answer just yeah. by typing in bizarre keywords. I'm very good at it. Knock, knock, knock. Knock, knock, knock. You need to say the magic word. Ooh. Hey, hey, man! It's great to see you. How you been? Look at me when you talk to me, Claudio. Wow. Did you get even more muscular, Claudio? Don't hit on Claudio in front of us. Is that one of his defining traits, his musculature? You can't see it underneath his anime shirt. Beautiful. <laughs> this guy's... I don't know. Always changing for the better, you two. <laughs> I brought my friends, Alex, Michael, and Rory with me. They wanted to check out your record collection and see if you could help them locate an album. Friends of Claudio and Chandra are always friends of mine. Please, have a seat. I'll make some tea. I don't know how I feel about this guy. I'm feeling a little weird about going to his house. Does he have eyeballs? 
So my new friends here wanted to talk about some elusive record they can't seem to track down. We've been looking for it for a while. We've been to literally like 10 record shops. Claudio says you've got quite the collection. I do indeed. So what sort of music interests young people these days? Hair metal, power metal, speed metal, metallic metal, pop punk thrash metal. Hell yeah. Um. Well, that one, they got confusing at the end. <laughs> I don't like pop punk thrash metal. I don't like hair metal. I feel like they start contradicting each other. Power metal's point. cool. Speed metal's cool. Metallic metal's just a joke. Like metallic metal. I'm just trying to think of like I what think. pop thrash would be. Um, like, I like. I'm like, excuse me. I like thrash. I like thrashing and I like punk music. Yeah. I don't like pop music though, so I feel like I might not be. I don't know. I, music music categorization is arbitrary, and I think it's it's stupid to get all tied up and pissy about it. I think it's just like it, I you know. Mean. I'm not really into metal. I mean, it's cool. That's more of Vela's thing, I think, with the eyeliner and choker. You know, the person we didn't bring with us. That's Who my thing. this enchanting young woman? Uh, is she here as well? Oh, Mark. No, she isn't here. She threw a hissy fit when she found out we were looking for this record. It don't say hissy fit. Yeah, it's... Do <laughs> people... I that's, say I say that, that's, but that's really patronizing. I don't believe they do. So, what sort of music are you into, Alex? Oh, usually down tempo stuff with trumpets, acoustic guitars, bells, toy pianos, and female vocalists singing sexually ambiguous lyrics. Oh, until the end, I was like, cake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they don't have a female vocalist. I don't think I have anything like that. That's why I said until the last one. Oh, well, there's one after that. Oh, the, oh yeah, no, female no. vocalist singing sexually ambiguous lyrics. I was yeah. thinking the sexually amb ambiguous lyrics part. Nah. Uh, perhaps you noticed my collection of guitars? Yeah, guitars. I, uh, I think I saw it on the way in. Do you play? And the guitars. I do. Mark here made his fortune playing music. Well, before he became a world traveler. Mark sponsored the Bring Him Home concert for my cousin who fought in the Gulf War. That was long before you could even walk. Hell, I was a kid then. In every single pose, she's just always limbering up. <laughs> she's just getting ready to slap <laughs> someone. <laughs> right, she's getting ready to backhand Claudio. Maybe Michael. She's just backhand Michael. Unites all. You see, heavy metal is the oral manifestation of all things good and powerful in the world. It contains the perfect positive energies to dispel hate, racism, sexism, poverty. With the power of the metal gods channeling through my guitar strings, I was able to bring peace and prosperity to the Middle East. Did you now? <sighs> well, he got our cousin home. Literally finds out about next year. Yeah, I did. Okay, I got ahead of myself. I brought peace to one family whose son had been taken captive. It's a harrowing tale filled with adventure and intrigue. Yeah, I don't know if we really have time for that. And besides, like I said, I'm not really all that into metal. Dude, you're a guest in this guy's home. Don't be a dick. Yeah. With all the bad fashions and teased hair, it's also... What? That's a very specific genre of metal. I feel Jeez like you're talking hair. about. He's talking about hair metal. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, a. It's really specific. Twisted sister or something. Does twisted sister have teased hair? Yes, and they're also like kind of dressed in drag, which is cool. Does teased hair just mean when it's all poofy? Yeah. So okay. So in stuff. case y'all don't know, a lot of I think a lot of boys out there probably don't know. It's when you you pull your hair out, right? And then you take like a comb and you go back and forth at the roots of the hair and like shred the hair follicle to the point where it sticks up a little bit. Hmm. You you shred it like that's you. It, and that's how you got the big hair. Yeah, and you, a lot of hairspray and maybe some hair dryers. Hmm. I mean, that is very '80s, but there's definitely a lot more to metal than that in the '90s when this took place. This is the '90s. We're moving forward. Our music is about things. <laughs> is it really uh, all about things? Do you not think metal was about anything? In the time of chimpanzees, I was a monkey. <laughs> 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 
What what is your music about, Alex? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna pretend that you don't mean to imply that heavy metal can't be about things. Yeah, loser. Clearly, you've never heard the soaring scream of the guitar paired in perfect counterpoint to an orchestra, accompanied by the sound of a trillion angels. You've obviously never heard Ronnie James Dio sing with his beautiful angel voice. Yeah. <laughs> You've all, you've all heard it from here, Alex. From Alex, uh, War Pigs is not about anything. <laughs> you, my <laughs> yeah, not about anything at all. To my greatest hit, Murder Run and Melancholia Reigns Unbroken. It's a lot less depressing than it sounds. All of Mark's music is like that. He has albums and albums filled with skeletons and decaying corpses. But somehow he manages to make music that speaks to the soul. Like Scene of Decay, The Stone, Part 9. The first few songs of that album are really beautiful, Alex. Disfigured by Eligas on High Altar of Honor. That is my personal favorite. I used to hula hoop to it all the time. <laughs> Metal hooping. <laughs> Metal hooping. Yay. One of Mark's tracks was featured in some pretty great animes. <laughs> Dragon Dude. of Thy Delusion and Powered by Delirium were featured in my second favorite anime, Panic Control. Death Note? D the, the band that does all the Death Note intros is uh, yeah. so good. Um, is that Maximum the Hormone? Yeah, Max yeah Maximum the Hormone. That... Oh. I was listening to some of their other music and I just fucking, I love it. It's all really great. I remember a yeah. lot of people were really put off by that anime intro and I'm like, no, it's cool. Yeah, okay, enough about this topic. Can you tell me about this tea we're drinking? This here is something I only bring out when friends are over. It's called Da Hang Pao. It's a world famous tea, exceptionally rare and difficult to come by. The bushes that produce this tea are reportedly over 1,000 years old. <laughs> Make sure you don't spill a drop. This is very special tea. Where did you get this? It's amazing. Yeah, it is amazing, right? I can't explain to you in detail how all these circumstances are related. It would be a very long and very complicated story. Fuck me up. <laughs> Go. Let's do this. <laughs> I no disrespect to you when I say this. It would be virtually impossible for you at this stage, young man, to understand. You don't sound at, at a different age than him, so it's not working great for me. Like the voice actors. Yeah, that is true. It's funny how like you, you can tell that even with just a voice. For this, yeah. But I'll do my best to explain the circumstances by which I came to possess this rare leaf. In my youth, I was something of a traveler. I lived for journeying and discovery. I had a partner, a very good man, who became ill in his mid-thirties. At the time, I considered myself to be very worldly. I lived for the dirt under my feet, but I also did not believe in the supernatural in any form. Alas, my partner came down with a severe stomach cancer that began to claim his life. He was a spiritual man, one might say, and he believed in miracles. His faith and his failing body led to the ending of our friendship. He left for India and I stayed back in Arizona, where I'd built a life for myself in between trips. He was gone for many weeks when I received a letter from him. The letter was scribbled in the handwriting of a dying man. It featured coordinates that, upon further inspection in an atlas, proved to be in the mountains of India. So I began my journey. After many days of travel, I arrived at the summit of Mount Kangchenjunga. I paid a local that, village boy I, to guide me. Is that to a location. real mountain? <laughs> Look that up. Stephanie does research. I'm I'm just curious. Cause yeah. if not, that seems kind of uh I don't know. Cause it kind of just sounded like it, like something someone would make up. Oh, it, oh my gosh, it's a real mountain. <laughs> sorry, how sorry, game you, developers. How do you mock the culture of? Um, I guess it was, they said India, right? Yep. Yeah. At the top, I found my. It's a, it's in Nepal, my technically, friend, in the Himalayas. Few weeks ago, had been on the brink of death, had been cured through the power of water. He was dehydrated the whole time? How embarrassing. The water 
boiled in the particular style of pots created by the Dharabeta yogis is said to have amazing healing powers. Now, when my friend had regained his strength tenfold, I was in shock. I longed to take a sample of this drink back to an American laboratory where it would be tested and ultimately turned into a cure. But I was told that the last bush bearing the tea had burned up in a forest fire. Naturally, I demanded proof. There was no evidence that any such fire ever occurred. Angered, furious, on the point of striking the yogis, my friend had to take me away. Yeah, strike the yogis. Yeah, what the fuck? Together, Yogi we explored the mountain <laughs> for the remainder of the week. Now, despite my anger that they would not let me test the tea, everything had been incredibly happy. In India, I've always felt an incredible glow of joy. On our last day, before we were to return, the earth gave out beneath my feet, and I was stuck. Soon a storm came. The storm was so bad, I, I feared it would wipe away the mountain, and I'd be stuck in a landslide. This is where things became interesting. My is friend it? was able to break away at the rocks, binding my feet with his bare hands. He had expelled the disease from his body and achieved a new strength. I believe I would have died on that mountain had it not been for him. I hold true to the fact that he survived his cancer so he could save me. When we returned, the yogi hermit had left his camp, but he left behind the pot he created to cure my friend's cancer and a container of this tea. You're wasting this tea on Alex? <laughs> oh no! That makes me really Yelts sad. Yeltsin tragedy. That's a fascinating story, man. Really, this is an amazing cup of tea. And it will never come up again. Yeah. You know, it's valued at $3,000 an ounce. <laughs> Michael, don't spit Michael, it out! No, you're wasting it! This My, is the first time yeah. you've spoken in like eight hours and it's to waste uh, tea. When, so, mm. what did you kids come for? Michael, I hate you. I hate you so much, Michael. Oh, my friend Alex oh here is gosh. looking for a record. It's called Mystical Ultima LP Legend. <laughs> Michael's still just there. That sounds so familiar. Oh, no. Yeah, what? Why is he still there? Yeah, different people are talking to each other, and neither of them are replacing Michael, who I think they just lost the voice actor for. I think the voice actor's just missing or something, and didn't they couldn't have him for any of this part, so they just didn't write any lines for him for like. Hours and hours. It's like we have him coughing. We he made a coughing sound once. <laughs> I know. Well, it's Michael for one second. How did you find out about this mystical LP? I found the jacket. <laughs> Here, I have it with me. Maybe you're right. We're about to see if he ever talks again. Because now I'm curious as to if you're just know. correct. Like, or maybe it's like maybe maybe we finally get to the point of Michael way later, and he has lines in that part. But they have like this whole middle part where they didn't have the voice actor to go back and fill that stuff well, in. Because now he's like by far the least interesting person in the whole party. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe those two were switching places with each other because they were making it so that the left side side of the screen and the right side of the screen are the two couches, but Chandra's on the right whenever she shows up. So no. Ah, uh, yes. The Mystical Ultima LP Legend by Vela Wild. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Did you say Vela Wild? Uh, yeah. But didn't you know this already? It's on the cover. <laughs> did you even Idiot. Wait? Idiot. Wait, 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 wait. Did you not read the cover? Alex. Alex. It was right there. Her name was right there on the cover. I... Uh... Kill him. Suddenly everything made sense. <laughs> it made a little bit of sense. Bella, the guitar, her ability to fight with sound. It took us hours to get I here. I love- He just didn't read the fucking cover. I love thinking about him just doing this in front of everyone. Like yeah. th that's the funniest part. Is this, this expression with the classes? Well, and just him talking too. <laughs> that's a trash shirt, shirt too. He's just trash, everything. It everything no. <laughs> everything is trash. Oh no. How are things with you? Uh, the creator of this record. How stupid I had been. I 
told yes. her about the record, and she must have assumed I read the title closely. Fella Wild. Probably a stage name. Did I say something wrong? You, uh, kind of stopped talking for a while and looked all deep in thought. <laughs> I just realized something. Yeah, the mind is like that. <laughs> you keep many it sure does that. Away <laughs> and they come out when they're the most needed. Every now and then, mind's just going around thinking things. Did you ever consider that this record might be locked away inside your mind? What? <laughs> uh, and if not yours, uh, maybe inside the mind of this wild character. Okay. <laughs> All right. Damn. So you don't have it? It's like Vela's Bankai. No, how could I? It hasn't come out yet. What? What? How do you know what it is? How do you know what the cover what? looks like? It's not been out yet. Uh, what the fuck? I don't get... Check the date on the back of it. See the sticker? Do not sell until January 1st, 2000. That's a bad release date. So how does he... But he, he sounded like he knew about the album ahead of time. He said, oh yeah, that album by Bella Wild. Like, he made it seem like he knew about it. How does he know about it if it's not out yet? Oh, are they holding it right now? Because didn't he have the jacket sleeve? Yes. Like, Alex had the jacket this whole time and hasn't read it. <laughs> oh. Since I'm not a time traveler, well, at least in this life, I couldn't possibly have this record. Oh, Mark, can you be the protagonist instead? We'll just, we'll just throw my, uh, Michael, uh, throw Alex off this mountain and then switch characters. I also just want to know why that tea was relevant. <laughs> Let's see if it comes up. I don't know. It's such a long story. You kids should pay closer attention to your record jackets. They have lots of useful information on them. I read the fuck out of like all my record and CD information. Murder methods. Back when it existed. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Mark. I know where to find this record now. What? You do? How? I'll explain some stuff when we get outside. Claudio, Chandra, there's some things I want to let you in on, especially since you've been so kind to me since we've met. You know, a lot of this is going to sound out there, and I know that. So listen to the sincerity in my voice, and not so much the absurdity of the words I'm going to say. Oh, there we go. Pretty deep. Yeah. Dude, I am also here contributing go away. nothing. Oh, sorry, man. Go on. He didn't contribute anything. That was filler. It could have been about anything. I'm not entirely sure of what's going on myself, so some of the parts might seem a little hazy. Okay, here it goes. He has so little impact on things happening. I swear that's probably a generic line they recorded for like any reason and then just plugged it in here because uh, they realized he hasn't spoken for like six hours. Uh, I hate when him. I arrived home from college earlier this year, I met Sammy Park. I fell madly in love with her for no reason. Factory and I found her there. She was alive and well. A bit odd, but pretty great, to be honest. Followed a cat. You mean followed this cat, the one that's with you? The one in your fucking pocket that you yeah. throw at things. <laughs> I tried to help her get out of the building, and some beings known as Soul Survivors appeared and took her away. I later met a woman soul named survivor. who told us that the Soul Survivors are beings from another reality, one like our own. She said that these beings have surrendered the right to their physical form in favor of a spiritual one. With this power, they could move within the soul space, which is the space in between realities. Then we met Rory, and Rory had recently lost his sister and encountered a Soul Survivor himself. Then I found out that one of these beings was living with me. I chased it out of my house and then into a radio tower. A pylon. Tower, it asked me Maybe, to play this record, of. to broadcast it. So that's why I've been looking for it. Okay, that's fair. I didn't expect you to believe me. Rory, you lost your sister? I'm sorry to hear that, man. Yeah, thanks. Oh, they can bond over lost siblings and not anime. <laughs> Lose Never anime. It's a terrible <laughs> burden on any person. Let us know if you need anything. Um, yeah, what's going on here? What is Alex, this? Alex, it's called empathy, you yeah, fuck. Yeah, what is this? Jump what is this? In a Emotion? Lake and then don't get back out. Remember, <laughs> someone before. We know what remember like. Alex, remember your reaction where you... The whole story is about him trying to find a missing person. 
but he can't deal with the idea that anyone empathizes with each other for having missing people. What well, I meant when he had to go apologize to Mello for being a dick to him about his sister yeah. being dead, and he was just like, meh, and hurt Mello's feelings. Rory, Mello. Can we just be Claudio? Claudio's, yeah. He's, just, just leave he's my this favorite. Party behind. Maybe that's what drew me to the same like too. I see. Uh, what about the soul survivors and all that? Let's say we've had experience with the supernatural before. I had a kid brother, you know. He went missing in 1985. Got on his bike one day to go to our neighbors. Seven houses up the street. And he just vanished. Never came back. We looked for him for months. Dad never stopped. Still hands out flyers at the grocery store every Sunday. He even got an artist to draw a mage. Were there ever any leads or anything? No one really ever investigated it. Sure, they looked around for him. And for a week, they had a task force. They had one guy they suspected. But every lead fell through. You act like they even tried. A four-year-old black kid goes missing in a shit neighborhood, and you think they really tried? Yeah, it's just... It's complicated, Alex. I don't remember this being on the news or anything, and you're from Windtown, right? That's like an hour outside of Frankton. How the hell did this get national coverage? Isn't it obvious, man? Same reason no one gives a shit about Semi Sammy Park. I'm sure if Aaron had been a beautiful white woman, everyone would have cared that he vanished. Everyone would have had a candlelight vigil and a moment of silence. But that's just not how these things work. And you know what's funny? My dad is a lawyer, and my mom was an assistant to the governor. It's not like we were shit no one people, you know? It just wasn't news or whatever they told us. Alex, don't you think Sammy's parents tried to get some attention for their daughter's disappearance? It's not that easy. Those people you see on TV are people who can make a great story for the press. That's just the way it works. I... I don't think I ever gave it any thought. Yeah, man. That's just how they get away with it. People like you don't think about it. And people like us, it's all we ever get to think about. Where our kid brothers win. Don't you think it's weird that a young woman goes missing in your town and only people talking about it are some weirdo kids on the internet? And they aren't really talking about it for awareness. You guys get off on it in a way, don't you? Some fantasy about being the white knight <laughs> swooping in and saving the exotic Korean girl. Get him. <laughs> yeah, Alex. <laughs> uh, easy now. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's go find his record. <laughs> where, uh, uh, where, 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 do, where do we do that again? You guys are coming along? <laughs> awesome. That's his takeaway. None of the dunking on. Yeah, he never, he doesn't... <laughs> He just faced that all out. I hope that they save Sammy and Sammy's like, ew, I don't like you. <laughs> and just is like, why did she's just annoyed with him? Because people it, people I, like him it. scare I hope me. She doesn't just fall in love with him for no reason. That'd be so creepy. Man, I don't know. Back to Frankton. We need to speak with Vella, the girl who made this album. Like, wow, I did it. I earned you. <laughs> yeah, oh, people with that mentality really <laughs> freak me out. I hate to admit it, but sometimes I just wish we could let him go. My younger brother, you know? I thought you about Michael. <laughs> Let him go into the woods. And you know what's really funny? I don't even remember what he looks like. We have a few old photos, but most of them, he just looks like every other kid to me. Round-faced, happy, playing video games, or falling off a bike. You don't remember anything about him? No, I don't think so. I think I only remember what people tell me about him. And you know what's funny? He was my twin brother. I was a minute older than him. Claudio still gets frustrated with me sometimes. You're his twin, can't you feel him out there? Or don't you have special twin powers that let you know if he's in pain? I don't believe in that stuff. Well, not usually. Sometimes I do. She did a good impression of him. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that actually. So. <laughs> it's in those moments that I really do think he isn't out there anymore. If there was a connection, I'd feel something. And since there is nothing there, he must be gone. Sometimes people just vanish. Or twins aren't magic. Yeah. <laughs> Remember our weird marathon of magic twin games we kept playing? We just kept, yeah, they're just yeah. coincidentally having twins in every game that we played. And they all had a magic connection, which is not a thing. They no. are there one moment and gone the next. 
Bad people take them, they fall into sewers, but life has to move on. That's not normal. <laughs> that, <laughs> <you know, laughs> they just fall, they just fall into sewers, let's can't get out. It's harder for my parents, I think, since they made him and whatever. But Claudia? Saying it like that. <laughs> they That's made not, him. It's not usually other people describe having kids. I made you. I like made you or whatever, so, so this you, is hard for me. I own you. <laughs> I don't think he'll ever move on. It's all he thinks about. And finding this semi sammy pack girl, this obsession you brought onto him, this shit isn't fair. She said pack. She said semi pack. I'm telling you, man. She didn't get the pronunciation guide. Th they keep going back and forth with this. Yeah, it's, it's when you have everyone die, voice acting in isolation and you're not directing it well enough. Mm. He had one dead kid to worry about never finding, and now you gave him another. She doesn't even have a reason to be misinterpreting it because I don't think she's ever seen it typed. <laughs> I think she only hears it from other people, so she shouldn't be pronouncing it differently from them. But she's a fool, everyone. Laugh at her. Ha 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 ha